The Baltimore Orioles, a team with a storied history, a roster filled with talent, and a city that wore its orange and black heart on its sleeve. As the dawn of the 1988 season approached, the Orioles carried optimism for how the season would unfold. Their success in the earlier part of the decade had elevated the expectations of fans and they were hungry for more. The roster boasted iconic Orioles players like Cal Ripken Jr., Eddie Murray, and Mike Boddicker. The city had reveled in the glory of pennant races and playoff runs of the early 80s, but little did they know that the 1988 season would unfold as a nightmarish chapter in the team's history. A tale of unmet expectations, shattered dreams, and a collapse that would be remembered for many years in baseball lore. Spring training, a period of optimism and renewal, took an unexpected turn for the Baltimore Orioles in 1988. Traditionally a time to fine-tune skills, assess player potential, and build team cohesion, the Orioles struggled to find their rhythm. Despite the hopeful atmosphere surrounding the team, their performance during spring training left much to be desired. The pitching staff, considered a stronghold in previous seasons, faced inconsistencies. Key players struggled to find their form, leading to concerns about the team's ability to hold its ground on the mound. The batting lineup, known for its power hitters, displayed a surprising lack of offensive prowess, leaving fans questioning the team's offensive strategy heading into the regular season. As spring training disappointments unfolded, concerns among fans and baseball experts alike grew exponentially. The Orioles, hoping to reverse the fortunes of the previous two seasons, seemed to be grappling with internal challenges that threatened to derail their season before it even began. Fans renowned for their passionate support expressed a mix of frustration and apprehension. The local media, usually optimistic in its coverage, began to scrutinize the team's every move, speculating on the root causes of the unexpected struggles. Baseball experts chimed in, offering analyses that pointed to a potential unraveling of the team's cohesion and confidence. The prevailing sentiment in Baltimore shifted from excitement to caution, as the city collectively held its breath, hoping for a turnaround before the regular season started. The Orioles' opening day in 1988 was meant to be a celebration, a grand entrance onto the stage of the new season. Instead, it turned into a harrowing prelude to the nightmare that awaited them. Facing off against the Milwaukee Brewers, the Orioles took the field with a palpable sense of unease. The pitching staff, already under scrutiny, struggled to contain the Brewers' offense. The starter, Mike Boddicker, couldn't get in a groove. Subsequent relievers continued the Orioles' struggles on the mound, resulting in 12 runs being scored. Offensively, the team's power hitters failed to deliver, leaving the scoreboard uncharacteristically quiet. The opening day debacle unfolded as a 12-0 defeat, a humiliating blow that was a sign of difficult times ahead. Fan and media reactions were swift and unforgiving. The optimism that once filled the air on that crisp opening day quickly turned into disbelief and frustration. The local headlines painted a grim picture, questioning the team's readiness and hinting at the ominous season that might lie ahead. With the opening day defeat, the Orioles' record-setting losing streak commenced with a perfect storm of challenges. A combination of inconsistent pitching, offensive woes, and defensive lapses contributed to the team's early struggles. Pitching, once a stronghold for the Orioles, faltered as starters grappled with control issues, yielding uncharacteristic numbers of walks and hits. The bullpen, usually a reliable force, faced difficulties closing out tight games, leading to heartbreaking losses. Offensively, the Orioles' powerhouse lineup failed to deliver timely hits and struggled to capitalize on scoring opportunities. The once potent offense became eerily silent, leaving fans longing for the explosive displays of previous seasons. Defensively, errors plagued the team, further compounding their challenges. The Orioles, known for their disciplined and fundamentally sound play, seemed to lose their way on the field. These struggles were evident in the second series of the season against the Cleveland Indians, where the Orioles were outscored 28-6 over the course of four games. Over the next six games in series is against the Kansas City Royals and the Cleveland Indians, they would go on to struggle to score more than three runs in any given game. As the losses piled up, a sense of frustration and disbelief permeated the Orioles clubhouse. The once promising season was slipping away, and the team found itself mired in a losing streak that would etch its name in baseball history. The losses would continue to pile up over the course of the next week and a half. The offensive statistics of the 1988 Baltimore Orioles during the early season paint a grim picture of a team that had seemingly lost its way at the plate. The traditional metrics of batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage all revealed startling declines compared to the team's historical averages. 
the team's collective batting average plummeted as Orioles hitters struggled to make consistent contact with the ball. The on-base percentage, a key indicator of a team's ability to generate scoring opportunities, saw a sharp decline, reflecting a lack of plate discipline and an inability to draw walks. The offensive downturn wasn't confined to team statistics. Individual player struggles at the plate further compounded the Orioles' woes. Star players, known for their prowess with the bat, experienced uncharacteristic slumps that contributed to the team's inability to generate runs. Cal Ripken Jr., the Iron Man and face of the franchise, faced one of the most challenging offensive stretches of his career. His batting average dipped, and the consistency that fans had come to expect seemed elusive. The struggles of Ripken, a player synonymous with Orioles' excellence, resonated as a symbolic representation of the team's broader offensive woes. Eddie Murray, another offensive stalwart, faced his share of challenges as well. The power-hitting first baseman, known for his clutch performances, found himself grappling with a decline in extra base hits and struggled to provide the offensive spark that had been a trademark of his illustrious career. Even the supporting cast, typically reliable contributors to the Orioles' offensive machine, experienced difficulties. Timely hitting became a rare commodity and the once explosive lineup seemed muted and ineffective. The foundation of any successful baseball team often lies in the strength of its starting pitching, and unfortunately for the 1988 Orioles, this pillar crumbled under the weight of inconsistency and struggles. The starting rotation, once considered a formidable force, faced challenges that heavily impacted the team during the losing streak. Control issues haunted the starters, leading to an alarming number of walks that extended innings and inflated pitch counts. The inability to consistently throw strikes put the Orioles' pitchers on the defensive, allowing opposing hitters to capitalize on favorable counts and create challenging situations. Command struggles were further exacerbated by an uptick in home runs surrendered by the starting pitchers. What was once a staff known for keeping the ball in the ballpark saw an uncharacteristic surge in long balls, adding an extra layer of difficulty in navigating through opposing lineups. This was exemplified by the play of Mike Boddicker, who despite being a former All-Star, Boddicker struggled with command issues and inconsistency, contributing to the team's pitching woes during the losing streak. Additionally, the lack of depth in the rotation became apparent, as injuries and underperformance forced the Orioles to rely on inexperienced or out-of-position pitchers. Jeff Ballard particularly signified this as Ballard was thrust into a more prominent role. He faced difficulties in maintaining consistency, exemplifying the challenges that inexperienced arms encountered. The absence of a reliable anchor in the starting staff contributed to a sense of vulnerability that opposing teams exploited. If the starting rotation was the first domino to fall, the bullpen became the second, plagued by a series of issues that further fueled the Orioles' record losing streak. The once reliable relief corps found itself mired in blown leads, late game collapses, and an overall lack of consistency. One of the primary concerns was the inability to bridge the gap between the starting pitcher and the closer. Middle relief, traditionally a stabilizing force, struggled to maintain leads or keep the team within striking distance. The lack of reliability in the middle innings placed an immense burden on both the starting rotation and the closer, exacerbating the team's overall pitching woes. Blown saves became a disheartening pattern for the Orioles as late-inning leads slipped away in critical moments. The once-trusted arms in the bullpen seemed to falter under pressure, leading to a cascade of losses that piled up during the record-setting losing streak. Greg Olson, the normally reliable closer, was the poster child for the weight of the team's struggles. Olson, known for his sharp control, experienced uncharacteristic blown saves and late-game difficulties during the losing streak. Injuries to key relievers further weakened the bullpen's effectiveness as the team found itself scrambling to fill crucial roles in high-leverage situations. The lack of depth and reliable options in relief exacerbated the team's pitching problems, leaving fans frustrated and searching for answers. Amidst the mounting losses, player frustrations became palpable, finding expression through interviews and candid quotes that laid bare the emotional toll of the losing streak. Star players accustomed to success voiced their discontent as the losses piled up. Cal Ripken Jr., the iconic figure synonymous with Orioles baseball, expressed his frustration in interviews, noting the toll the losing streak took on the team's morale. The Iron Man's disappointment was echoed by other key players, creating a collective sentiment of discontent within the clubhouse. Eddie Murray, a stalwart in the Orioles lineup, didn't mince words when addressing the team's struggles. His candid comments reflected the internal turmoil as the team's offensive powerhouse struggled to come to terms with the uncharacteristic downturn. 
the coaching staff and management faced an unrelenting pressure cooker as the losses mounted. The scrutiny intensified as fans, media, and ownership sought answers for the team's inexplicable collapse. Manager Frank Robinson, a respected figure in baseball, found himself walking a tightrope, attempting to balance the need for accountability with the delicate task of maintaining morale. As the losses accumulated, speculation about potential changes in coaching or personnel permeated discussions among fans and analysts alike. The sense of urgency to reverse the team's fortunes led to rumors and conjectures about possible shakeups that could inject new life into the beleaguered Orioles. Questions arose about whether managerial changes were imminent or if the front office would pursue trades to reshape the roster. The pressure on the coaching staff and management intensified as the organization grappled with finding a path out of the abyss. Media outlets were quick to capture the pulse of Orioles fans as losses piled up during the unprecedented losing streak. In articles published by the Baltimore Sun, beat writers chronicled the frustrations of fans through poignant interviews at the ballpark. The Orioles' losing streak transcended local media and garnered national attention, amplifying the narrative of despair. Major sports networks featured segments and articles dissecting the Orioles' struggles, with national analysts weighing in on the team's predicament. A piece on ESPN highlighted the historic nature of the losing streak, emphasizing the impact on the team's legacy and the collective psyche of Orioles fans. The decisive game took place on a fateful evening at Memorial Stadium, where the Orioles faced off against the Chicago White Sox. The team entered the contest carrying the weight of a 21-game losing streak, a burden that seemed insurmountable as they took the field. Pitching played a crucial role in the Orioles' quest for redemption. A standout performance from the starting pitcher Mark Williamson, coupled with a revitalized bullpen, showcased a newfound determination to turn the tide. The pitching staff, often beleaguered during the losing streak, rose to the occasion with a collective effort that stifled the White Sox offense. Offensively, the Orioles found their rhythm, producing timely hits and capitalizing on scoring opportunities. Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray both homered in the game, and the once silent bats roared to life. The renewed offensive prowess signaled a departure from the struggles that had defined the team during the agonizing streak. The 1988 Baltimore Orioles' record-setting losing streak stands as a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of baseball and the resilience required to navigate its challenges. Over the course of 21 consecutive defeats, the Orioles endured a grueling test of character that tested the limits of both players and fans alike. While the streak itself is a chapter in Orioles history that few wish to revisit, it offers valuable lessons and insights into the dynamics of the game and the human spirit. The Orioles would go on to finish 54-107 and that year, by all accounts a miserable season. Due to the spectacular nosedive the team took right from the beginning of the season, the team will live on in infamy.